Hi, welcome back to Take Your Turn. My name is Tin. And my name is Ricky. And today we are going over how to play Acropolis. Mm -hmm. Acropolis is like a tile placement um, city building game uh, for two to four players. Yeah. Um, and it plays about 25 minutes. Yeah, it's a pretty quick game. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you're placing tiles um, either on the surface, and you're also trying to build them up to give your plazas and districts and get the most points mm -hmm. from your city building. Yeah. So let's dive on in on how to set up your game. So uh, this game is played with two to four players. So each of the players will get a starting um, tile, which is shaped like this. And you'll see these different icons. We'll go over what each of the icons and colors mean. So on the backs of each tile, they'll have a little icon that will show um, the number of players. So like for two to two or more players, you'll play with these tiles. If it's three or more, though, you'll play with the you'll add in the three. If it's four, then you'll add in the four tiles. Yeah. So you'll you'll put them into stacks. For two players, you'll put them in stacks of three. For uh, three players, you'll put them in stacks of four. Uh, and then for four players, you'll have <laughs> stacks of five tiles. Yeah. And right here, we are set up for a two-person game, which is why we have a total of four tiles out here. After you've done 11 stacks mm -hmm. of however many tiles you're supposed to do, the three, four, or five, you put all the remaining tiles that you have out here. Um, so for if you had a, there'll always be one more than number in the stacks out here. Since we have three in the stacks, there are four out here remaining. Perfect. And then one of the players will be given the first player token. And in the, in the <laughs> rule books, it's whoever climbs a hill last. Oh, most recent. Most recent. Most recent to climb a hill. Ah. So Ricky has that high honor. He'll get the first Thank player. you. Yes. Um, you're also given a player aid card, which is very helpful to differentiate the different areas in the games. Um, so we can go over what each of the colors mean. Yep. Um, and since I'm first player, setting up, I'm going to take one of these cubes, and you would take two as second player. Third player would take three cubes, fourth player would take four cubes. Mm -hmm. And we can go over what these cubes mean. Um, they play an important part on which tiles you can pick up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so let's go over what each of these different uh, icons on these tiles mean so that you can know what tiles to pick. Yep. Um, so for scoring in the districts, there are different colors. So for the blue, uh, blue areas, those are residential. They're called houses in the game. Um, and there's two different types. There are the blues where it's just a building, and then there are blues with uh, the stars. The, the, the star tiles Will, all, will be called plazas, and they're the ones that allow you to score those colors in your city. So if you don't have the corresponding plaza in your city, then you won't get to score that color. So if I had a whole bunch of red buildings, but no red plaza, I would not be able to score those buildings. So in the game, you're really just multiplying the number of stars you have times the number of districts you have. Mm -hmm. So certain districts um, are gonna be worth more when you have more stars from plaza so um yeah that's kind of your your goal for the end game exactly so for the blue ones there are the residential areas and they want to be connected to each other um so you only score with the biggest grouping of blues yep so if you had two blue groups um you want to score the biggest one so you want to keep adding to whichever blue group that you have as the largest one for the yellow ones those are these the residential, I mean, not residential, <laughs> they, they're called markets. Uh, so the yellow are markets and they want to not have competition. So they don't want to be next to each other. So they only score if um, they are not next to another market. So let's say, for example, I placed the two tiles like this. This would not be a great idea because both of these markets now will not score me any points. But if I have them separated by one area, like so, this, both of these markets would score. Yep. And uh, the plazas for yellow are two. So you automatically get two instead of just the one. And then for the red, they're called barracks. Um, so they're kind of like the armory of your city and they want to be on the perimeter. So as long as they are on the outside border, thank you. 
um, th that will score you points. So this red will score me points, but if it's completely surrounded like like this, <laughs> then it will not score me any points. So you want the red tiles to be facing outward of your city. The other ones are the temple, which is the purple ones. Those just need to be surrounded by, uh, be completely surrounded. They like to be surrounded by other um, buildings. So th as long as they're enclosed, the purple ones score you points. Yep. And then the last one is gardens. Now gardens are the green ones and they just score you automatically for being in your city because everybody loves a good garden. Uh, and yeah, there's no stipulations to those as long as you have them in your city and you, as long as you have the, the what's this marker? The plaza, <laughs> the green plaza in your city, then greens will score you points. Yep. And those that have the three stars on them. So those are the most valuable when it comes to the stars, mm -hmm. um, but there are also less. So the more valuable zones, actually there are less of them in your stacks. So um, they become a hot commodity if you want to get the high multipliers. Exactly. And then we can go over um, the, pl the turn order and go over ab about stacking because there's some things that happen when you build your city up. Yep. Um, they actually score you more points if you build up. Yep. So we'll go ahead and go over that once we just dive into a little bit of an example of a turn. So as first player, um, I have one cube. Mm -hmm. um, and let's say that I wanted to, I'm just going to take the first one here. Right. So like with your setup, you'll just have free. the four tiles. The first one, that's like the furthest out from everyone. Yep. Um, or you can just d a distinct like which one is, if you want to do like this one is the free one, can. But typically yeah. it's the, the furthest one out. We've been working on the furthest away from the stacks. Yeah. Yep. The, that one's always free. If you want the ones that are further in, you'll pay with your, your stone cubes. Yep. They're not really stone, they're wooden. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are stones. <laughs> um, so yes, so then now it would be Tim's turn to take a tile. Yes, so this one is automatically free um, since it's the furthest one out. Um, but let's say I really want this one. So I'm gonna pay that cube and it just goes to the bank and then I get to pick this one. Yep. I'll do that one there. And let's say I do want this one. So I skip this one by paying a cube and take this tile here so that I can get a barracks on the outside of my city to get that started. Perfect. And now we have one tile remaining. So when you have one tile remaining, um, you can pass the first player because it's going to be their turn. So you're kind of marking um, as you bring out a new tile. You take the remaining tile, push it to the end. So that as it's the new free one and then take a stack and lay them out mm -hmm. in order. And then turn starts over again with this one being free and these costing to pay stones. Mm -hmm. um, if you did want to take this very last one, you'd have to pay one, two, three stones to get to the very end one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you keep going through. Every time you get one tile remaining, you bring out a new stack, push it to the end. And once you get with no stacks remaining mm -hmm. and one tile left, no one gets the last tile. Mm -hmm. That's when you stop and you score. Perfect. Um, let's go over what happens when you build your city upwards. Yes. Um, so Ricky's city is a great example right now. So let's say that he selects uh, this tile uh, and then places it over, the white spaces are called quarries. Um, so for each of the quarries that you cover up with a tile, you get a stone cube yeah. um, as currency to to add. So yeah, there are one, two, three quarries here. Mm -hmm. So when this gets placed here, I get three stone. Perfect. If I would have placed this here and covered a market, um, I'd only get two stone because I don't get anything for covering the market. Mm -hmm. But this would be three. Yeah. And then we can, uh, so for valid placements of tiles on the second level, they cannot be overhanging. So he could not place this tile like this or like, I don't know, like this. You cannot have any overhang. It always has to be covering up another level. Yeah. Level. Yes. Exactly. So uh, the first, you have to cover up a full first level to build to a second. 
you'd have to cover a full second level to build to a third, mm -hmm. um, and so on. You can never have any overhangs. Even oh, you can never even just overhang over this one because this is a first level and these are second. So yeah. yep. now that we would place, um, oh. I like that one there. Oh, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll kind of just organize a little bit. And we'll kind of do that way we could go over some scoring. Yes. So let's say that it's at the end of the game. You have built out your city. I'm going to quickly just pick and stack these tiles here. Um, luckily, there is a handy scoring pad that makes scoring a lot easier. Oh, yeah. Um, that way you can count up the number of plazas and then the number of districts and then you just multiply across and then add a lot of math in this game. A lot of math. <laughs> so remember when we went over what districts like and how they go together. Um, you start off with your houses. Um, so for the blue blues, ones. Mm -hmm. um, I have two blue plazas with one star each, so that's two total stars. Mm -hmm. And for districts, I have one, two, three, four. Since it's the second level, it counts twice. Mm -hmm. So two stars, four districts, so that'd be two times four, eight. I would score eight points for blue. Um, moving on to yellow. I have two yellow districts that are separated, but no stars. Mm -hmm. So I would score nothing for yellow because I have no yellow plazas. However, 10, has uh, one yellow plaza for two stars and three markets that are separated. So two times six, no, oh, two times three would be six. six. Yeah, it's a mental math. <laughs> there, there's a, jumped, there's uh, a lot. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> think it's six. Yes. Uh, but so you'd have six yellow points, and I would have no yellow points. Yeah. Um, uh, let's backtrack to blue for me. So I have one blue uh, plaza. Yeah. Um, I don't count this one. I mean, it's great that it's on the second level, but it's not. I guess I could count whichever one I consider. Yeah, the but they're separate though. So yeah. you have two here and two here. You don't get credit for both. No, unfortunately. I should have placed it like so. That would score me a lot more points. So you get, but yeah. since I, you, there's no back, you can't re. Um, no backsies. Um, yeah, no backsies. <laughs> you can't unbuild and build again. <laughs> But um, yeah, so the, that would only score me two yep. points. Um, in mine, there's the barracks. Yep. Um, the red ones? Yep. I, have, I just go by the colors. Sometimes the they, <laughs> I'm like, I don't remember what they're called. But uh, yeah. This one is, I have one red plaza for two stars. Two stars. One, two red districts. Right. Because that one, even though it's great, it's on the second level, it's... Fully enclosed, yeah. so it doesn't. It don't count. Goes. Yeah, um, and then purple would be. Uh, I have no um, plazas for purple, but these are not enclosed, so they wouldn't count anyways. Yeah, yours would count, but you have no plaza, so it'd be zero points. Right, um, and then you'd get no points for green since you have no plazas, and I have six stars in one garden, so one times six, six green points. Mm -hmm. um, and then you add up your total points. Yeah, plus and then if your... you have any leftover stone cubes, those each count for one bonus point at the end of the game. Yep. And then the person with the most points wins. Yeah. So, yeah, that is Acropolis. It's a, a bit of strategy, a, a bit of luck of which, which tiles you can get um, yeah. and, and the placement and going around. Um, pretty fun yeah game. it's a lot of fun yeah it's very straightforward you pick a tile add it to your city and then out of the map yeah. <laughs> it was a game we uh waited in line for at gen con but it, it ran out yeah, of yeah. Coffees. <laughs> yeah but finally we were able to get a coffee and uh i'm excited to show you guys the game mm -hmm. yeah it's a fun one um, well thank you for joining um let us know if we missed anything or what you think about the game and can't wait to see you guys next time. Yeah, um, and look out for our playthrough video of Acropolis. We'll do a full playthrough of how to play. Yep. <laughs> this was a how to play. Next is playthrough of yes. Acropolis. Sometimes it's easier to see it played through mm -hmm. uh, after you kind of learn about a little how to play it. So check that out, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. All right, it's time for you to take your turn. See you guys. Bye.